I am here today in two capacities. One as a director of design company Beo Sanchi Goen, and the other as a professor at Fongchen University. So my theme today is how is it, would it be possible for us to have a Taiwan miracle number two? We can't go on living from the glory of the Taiwan miracle as it was and started around the 1970s and brought us to the prosperity that we have today. And then I'm going to also look at the, the, uh, the spread of design from a special area to just another competence in society. So that's the part called from designers to create. Okay. So I don't think that's a problem today. So the company that I come from is called Animating Designers. And we do have something there. I'm not going to talk much about it. Health Design Strategic Services. And that's what we did when we were in Denmark in 2002. We moved our headquarters to Taiwan. And our motto is a better life in a better world. So I think it's following very neatly after Professor Le Liu. So, and I also have founded and run the, uh, at Fongja we have uh, the International School of Technology and Management, which is a new school which started here last year. And here we have 14 wonderful young people who are studying in uh, the, uh, the first year of, uh, they started their first year of that school last year, and we have 20 who started last year, we have 95 who started this year, so I didn't bring them with me today. The 95 probably would fill up the whole space. Okay, so there I have created a program called the Ideas Program, which means innovation, design, entrepreneurship, application, success, and win! Yes. So that's what we do there. This is uh, some of the work that we do at the designers, uh, Scandinavian designers. Uh, we, sorry, we do product design, interiors, exhibitions, buildings, and we do branding, packaging, graphics, every kind of design. So also the Scandinavian design group. We have in Copenhagen, in London, Las Vegas, and in Taichung. And John is the headquarters. And of course, we win prizes. And we divide our services up into two parts, which follows also very neatly from Professor Liu. The creativity part, generating value, is about creating intellectual capital. And the other part, which is about innovation, is the doing part, is developing products, services, experiences, and transformations. That results, one, the top one, in a stronger brand, and the bottom one in results in more money, process capital. Now, I know that you are all from different areas, and also my time is limited, and I am a person who can speak probably for 24 hours without stopping, even to eat. So, I imagine that you already read the slides before I speak them. So I'm not going to read the slides. You just look in the slides for what is interesting for you. Okay? I'm not going to describe them in detail. Oh, but this one, sorry, sorry. This part is something amusing. But this is the part that makes people happy, and this is the part that makes businesses happy. Booyah! Okay? So here, um, when I was, uh, when Professor Yang asked me to do, oh, it's a little bit small. Okay, so asked me to, to think about all of this um, situation that we have today. We are here today, and uh, we started roughly when Bauhaus moved to the Weimar in uh, 1925, and. This was the idea of design was to bring quality of life from only, not only from the rich but through mass production and industrialization to bring it to ordinary people. And then we progressed. This was product design was born, and then we developed the design practice in the, in the, in the 1960 around 1965. I'm just 
taking the big steps. This is the Taiwan National Industries. This is NTUG stock. Remember in 1985, I don't know if there's anybody here who's old enough to remember Microsoft Windows 1. That was in 1985. It's a long, long time ago. Then in 2005, we got Stanford D School. The and it, as we went along, the focus of what we were doing changed. Here we were still hoping to make people happy after the Second World War. Here we became really greedy. Um, design became just a, a tool for businesses to earn more money. And then we began to consider what we were doing. After this white line, we began to look at green design that emerged in 1985. Then we looked at design for good. And now, where are we going now? At the top here, you can see design emerged from the engineers and architect professions. We got designers. And now, we've educated so many designers, overproduction of designers everywhere in the world, not just in Asia, everywhere. There's actually not enough work for most of those designers. So we have now the creative class. And what are we going to do? What are those people, what is the role that those people are going to play in the future development of society? So, Idea number one is what is a, who are the next generation? And what, what is their reference? How they can create value? And here is this little, this little uh, famous quotation from Lincoln. The best way to predict the future is to create it. And probably that is the biggest mission of design at all. So here we have a description of the development of, of societies and industries, mechanization, the first generation mechanization of automation, process automation, electronic automation, and smart automation, industry four, and the synergy and integration of everything around us that is happening right now. And this is not only just the, the synergy and integration of things, but also of people and ideas. Never before have we had so many ideas available to everybody, everywhere. So we are creating a network of minds. That is what actually happens through social media, is that we share ideas in a way that never was possible before, unless maybe we lived in a small society in the beginning of time. So now, here let's look at the five economies from this, the, the um, well, the economic forum defines factor-driven, efficiency-driven, innovation-driven, and because I don't think that's sufficient, I've added a knowledge-driven led society and a strategy-led society. And that is a huge transition from looking at industry as a way of, uh, of societies, as a way of production, to a way of living. So we move from customers to consumers to clients to citizens. And the final stage here that we can identify at the moment is the emergence of people as created, not as consumers. And this is a significant difference because this is an objectified human being and this is a subject of life. Industry society, consumer society, and network society, design society, and creative society. And you can see here, this is where we move over into the shared mind of the future. And the people that we need to develop are intellect. It's their intellect we need to develop. So here we have design. Design in society from the consumer society, generation two, which is about where Taiwan is, towards Europe, which is in the design thinking era, really spread out to a given part of life in Europe. Today is design. Then we move towards the user experience society, the design society that is projected, for example, in the Denmark 2020 uh, uh, strategy. 
And then we have moving towards the Europe 2030 strategy, which is like a creative society built on strategic, sustainable strategies. And this one I call the blue hybrid society because we have blue hybrid cars now. They have both a petrol engine and an electric engine. And that is like, this is the petrol engine and this future is the electric or hydrogen or whatever type of engine we're going to have in the future. So here we are talking about industrial design is already passed into user design, social design, and future design. So let's look at it. Here, we started off with agriculture in Taiwan. In Taiwan in 1946, Taiwan was an agricultural country selling sugar and bananas to the world. That's not very long ago. And we are trying very hard to move through these steps and stages towards uh, relevance in the future economy. So here again we have the different uh, drivers and the different parts. And you can see here, we are talking in Taiwan, for example, the design center and the police and people like that are talking about creating clusters. But actually, the current move is in the blue hybrid economy is towards community and collective futures. So clusters are difficult because they're actually people who are competing with each other. A community is somebody who shares same values. So here, at this time, we're actually discussing whether we should move away from a profit motive towards a prosperity motive. That means that everybody is sharing in the wealth cultural wealth of society and the material wealth of society is that each one of us trying to take our part as much as we can for ourselves. So here is the different economies and the final economy is maybe the move towards a cyclic economy. So, sum it up. Before, or maybe still in Taiwan, 90% of our time and our energy is spent in making things. And 10% is in the ideas part. But definitely, in most, if this is a product of OEM services and ODM and experiences and OBM, 10% is the actual part. 90% is the thinking part. It's really important that we can develop people, we can educate people who can think their way to better strategies before we make more things, as Professor Liu so rightly was telling us just before. So we move from design practice to design thinking towards a design philosophy of the way that we would like to live. So let's just quickly look at something which I've actually developed in the last week which I thought was rather nice and I will share with you, is about positive change and uh, different growth patterns. Three types of growth. Linear growth, cubic geometric growth, and exponential growth. Exponential growth is what happens when ideas suddenly flush into the network of ideas around us, into social media. It spreads from one person to two people, from two people to four, from four to eight to 16. That is exponential growth. And that is the society where we're going to be li living, where we are already, young people are already living. When you go to Facebook and you share, for example, a new idea of a way of doing things, it reaches millions of people. This is huge and very, very rapid change. So, this is the manufacturing part. Geometric expansion is for technology, and ideas are exponential. And it's moving towards an exponential economy with, you know, there are universities, for example, Singularity University, is basing all their education, all their theory on exponential uh, change. So, as 
because we are in a time of huge transition, as Professor Liu just said, it means that we are setting new benchmarks for value. And also, we were told what is a value proposition and what is the, the value delivery. It's not products anymore, it's the value to our lives and our futures. So, let's have a look at Taiwan in big steps, the development of Taiwan from 1950, the electromechanical and, uh, this, uh, was an industry, electronic industry, digital industry, and we're on the birth, we are living in the days of the birth of the quantum computer. Quantum computing is not linear processing, it's how it's actually exponential computing. It's a very, very interesting and very, very exciting development, and Taiwan absolutely has to be part of it, because this is where the future lies. Here you can see the industrialization was linear, the miracle was linear because it was just growing and growing, and at some point here, around 2000, we moved into the end of new technologies. And here is our next step. Can we be part, can we create a Taiwan miracle number two out of people, of networked young people who believe in a better future? You can see here Moore's law was valid for this geometric expansion. So here are just a list of some of the global challenges that face the young people today. The people, for example, who are in this university or my university. These are the things, these are the projects that they have to deal with. Otherwise, as Professor Liu just said, there is no future for them. By the time my students are my age, in around 2050, 2055, there will be 9 billion people. When I was born, there were 2 billion people. And that is just absolutely mind staggering So, for them, actually, sorry, these are the issues. For their personal issues, will they have clean water? Will there be breathable air? Will they have space to live? Even right now, they can't even afford to buy an apartment. They have to live at home or in dorms. They, but they don't have any hope of buying a home for themselves, the way that we do. Health, a job, children. Most young people in Taiwan have no ambition to have children. So basically, Taiwan has no future. We, I mean, if people give up the idea of having children because they don't believe there's going to be a better future. That's a very significant center of society. So how do we make a better life and a better world? Well, the challenges of the future are the opportunities of today. That's why I teach entrepreneurship. Because those challenges, if you can create any kind of solution which is better than what we have today, to any of those challenges, you are founding the future industries, the future businesses. So who is going to grasp those opportunities? Let's look at the production of, of, of designers, following Richard Florida here, we have again the same growth model. Here, uh, the supply of, de of designers, the demand of from industry and, and business, and the oversupply. So if you, uh, you can see already, here we have the pioneers designing other schools, design schools, creating designers of business, design professionals, that's the specialists in the design group. And you can see here already, around 2000, we had a complete overproduction of designers worldwide. And here, we no longer have the super creatives who were in the beginning, the ones who created the ideas. We no longer have the core creatives, that means the people who are driving a completely new profession. We have ordinary professional people who are just working in the creative industries. In the US, 50% of the society, people in society, are employed in what is called the creative uh, sector. That means if you are around 50 or more than 50, it means you are living in a creative society. 
you're no longer living in an industrial society, just as if you're not lots of farmers, you're not living in an agricultural society. So that is the society of the future, where ordinary people, ordinary employees, if you're a designer, you're just another employee in a company where there are marketing people, sales people, production people, all kinds of other people, you're part of a team. So this is employees and team workers. We are no longer the heroes of the first generations. We are just another, another profession. So this was elite education, and this is mass education. Thinkers and doers. OK, idea number three, reaching for the future. So I'm just going to very quickly go through, and I'm not going to explain it all because you will understand the idea very quickly. In Denmark, in 2002, the design center made what they call the design ladder. ladder. No design, design is unnecessary. Step one, design as styling, it's a shape. Design as a process, that's a skill. And design is innovation, design is a strategy. Four steps. And they define design as design is problem solving. We already hear today that actually design is not only problem solving, it's actually finding out what kinds of problems to solve. So let's have a look at our, the, the, the seven step ladder that we made when we were working for Itri. I forgot what Itri called in Taiwan. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we did a report and we created a seven step ladder. And you can see here the creative innovation, after innovation comes creative, after the, uh, creative comes integrative. And finally, strategic design. So this changes the market, this changes life, this changes the future. So you can see here that most of design, as we think about it, up to Europe, up to 2000, was about in-the-box thinking. Just developing new stuff, changing companies, new product function, etc., etc. But then we got the idea, like Apple, for example, changing the market. They didn't actually change the product. The technology was pretty much the same as everybody else, but they changed the market. So that was design plus branding. New value strategy is branding plus responsibility about life. That's social, corporate social responsibility. And changing the future is about respons uh, responsibility plus sustainability. And this is interesting. It's something that an idea we had that we had in our company. In the box thinking, out of the box thinking, and designing new boxes. The new box means simply a new paradigm for the kind of life that we're going to have. So here we have. We have a stand here. We have Taiwan today, OEM, basically. Even the largest company, most of our turnover is OEM. The next step is innovation, this is designers. Here's the creatives come in as a new area in our industry creating ODM strategies. And finally, we have the core creatives creating the future. We no longer ask them to design products, we ask them to help to shape our futures. So, how do we design for the green economy? Because the green economy is a demand from finance, from United Nations, from every large organization, not global organization, demands that we move towards a green economy. So that's changing the, 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 the ethos. The United Nations has five Ps, planet, people, prosperity, partnership, and peace. Right. Can you imagine designers actually designing social strategies for peace? That would be a great thing for us to do instead of continuing to design more products. Here they are. This is just the, the five Ps for, from the United Nations. And this, we have again something similar. Professor Liu, this is a, electronic waste. And you can see, here's a village. The poison from the waste goes directly into the water. Yummy, yummy. So greed or green, making more goods or doing good. This is a very, very important cross point, crossroads we're at. Whether our the purpose of design is to make more goods or to do good. So, in the end, the question, the only question that really matters 
is how does an idea, a design, or a business improve life? If we can prove in if the measure of this of good design is so simple, if it improves life, it's good. If it doesn't, forget it. Don't do it. So let's think, rethink the recycle, reuse, reduce. Let's rethink it to say, okay, we have to have economic prosperity and continuity, that's sustainability. We have to protect the environment and resources, and we have to have social equity. Everybody should share in the, the wealth of the future. One of the things that my students were most concerned about was the difference, the disparity between rich and poor, which is getting bigger and bigger, not by the year, but by the minute. The rich are getting richer, and the ordinary people like us are, since in Taiwan, since to the, for the last 15 years, the salaries have not gone up, but there is inflation, and things have got more expensive. So basically, we got poorer. And that is super unfair to our young people. We've got to change that. So let's dare to be fair to people, dare to care about the planet, and dare to share profit. That means um, we have to build a, a new society built on respect, regeneration of our, the world, and the redistribution of wealth. So, I'm very, very quickly going to just show you how we face this at my university. Because that is where we're creating and designing the future. So, the school is called the International School of Technology and Management, and we send our, after two years, we send our, the, our the, students abroad to three partner universities, one in San Jose, University in California, one Purdue, University in, in Michigan, and one the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. And the students here today are going to go to Australia. So the focus is technology plus management, but let's look how, what really do our students need in order to be functional, useful members of future society. So, the ideas program is based on future jobs and future skills, not on what we used to do. And we all, we, from the very beginning, we look at what's going to happen in their lives, at each step of their lives, up to the time when they would like to retire. I mean, I know Taiwanese like to retire when they're young, but that's a dream. Actually, most of us, of course, have to go on working. Um, so, here we had this, we've got to look, we have to actually educate intellectuals, which is something which is completely strange and foreign to the whole Taiwanese education system, because we're educating doers, not thinkers. So, the next step is a knowledge base. Final step, the next generation, they have to be strategy led, they have to learn how to develop strategies. And this is the part that they're going to be their focus because they've got to solve these problems, otherwise there's no future. They've also got to be very careful that they're not just professionals, they're actually contributors. It's like on the internet, there are only five to ten percent of people using the internet who actually contribute anything on the internet. Most people just share what already exists. And that is a huge, huge issue, because it means we're not actually contributing anything to the idea mass that's available on the internet. OK, so this, environmentally sustainable governance, leadership, sustainability, life, those are the issues that we have to uh, work on with our students. And so that's what we do at Fongja. We add design to these technology and management. I put in the logo up here. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, just quick. Yeah. So what we do, the, our education is not called design education. It's called entrepreneurial innovation management. So it combines technology, management, and design thinking. So doers and thinkers. That is what we do. Not only people who can think, but who can actually make things happen. We work in ICE Design Lab. I means innovation, creative, creation, and entrepreneurship. 
This is the outside of the lab. These are the students working in the lab. It's a different from a normal Taiwanese classroom. And when they finish, they get a certificate as an icebreaker. That means they can go into industry, they can go into organization and help to initiate change. Icebreaking is something that breaks through what it had is as yet an unbreakable wall. So, what we do is that we educate them in change making and changing the game. That is our focus. It's not solutions, it's not problems, it's not design, it's actually making change. So, they are asked to uh, discover gap challenges, gaps and opportunities, design products, services and experiences, and deliver the innovation that the future needs. That is creating positive transformation. Because no matter what those young people are going to do in the future, the most important thing is that they add positive impact to the society where they're going to be living. So that's why we call it Ideas for Life, the program. And the conclusion is thinking better is a step one. Transformation, services, experiences, and tools. Do better is the production part. This is the thinking part. Better values, look better, work better, and make better. Those are the four functions in design. So a better life in a better world through creativity. Make a difference. Creativity is knowledge-based. You are just not. Creativity doesn't come out of nothing. You have to be very well educated and have a huge knowledge base to be really creative. You have to add to that, dare to think big ideas that change life, formulate an agenda for the future, for yourself and for your generation and for your work mates, and to add to that, start with ethical values, humanism, Sustainable, inclusive, connected, and pluralistic. We cannot have a society like the society Trump is dreaming of for the US, where you have fewer and fewer options. We have to open up by like Taiwan, where everybody has a voice. If we dare to care about people, if we have clear principles, courageous policies for sharing the planet fairly so all can prosper, the future is full, not of fear, but of promise. So, think new, that's creativity. Think different, that's originality. Think better, that's innovation. Better understanding, better, more imagination, deeper knowledge. Think forward, that's entrepreneurship, because we engage in our future and invest in it. Make a difference, that's human values. Care more, that's Taiwan soft power. Shit, shit.